Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and we're pushing into late September now so I thought it's time to give you a bit of an update on what's happening in the greenhouse in September. Well first up we have this gorgeous pelagonium that has just flowered and flowered and flowered all summer. Just an amazing one. I'm putting the name up at the top and although I've started cutting my pelagoniums back and spraying them for winter I couldn't bear to cut this one just yet because it's looking so good. Just beside the pelagonium is Hymanthus albifloss. First flowering for me and I have six flower spikes, two, three, four, and then that pair over there. It's been a long old haul with this plant now, and you probably saw the video about South African bulbs where I berated the fact that this one hadn't flowered after so long. And despite being such an enormous plant, look at it. But anyway, it's done well for me this year, so I won't complain. We've got another pelagonium behind, which is looking well again. And this one here, this is called Ardens. And this is the pelagonium everybody wants because it's just got such fantastic flowers. But it's very hard to grow. I find it hard to grow. It puts up its leaves after it finishes flowering. Now I've got a few leaves there. But this year it actually has, well, it's one main stem, but there's uh, three flower clusters coming off it. So perhaps I'm finally getting the, the knack of it. In this corner is my Jacobinia. Now this came as a complete and utter surprise because this plant was a cutting last summer. There's two of them in fact. There's one and there's the second one. And this one's going to flower too. The flower heads, they remind me, they remind me of something, they remind me of hops, that's it. But um, I really didn't expect this one to flower at all. So I was watering yesterday and just by chance came across this tucked away under some staging. Absolutely delighted. You can see it's quite a, you know, it's a small plant, just one stem. And yet I have the flower. There's the variegated aeonium I picked up in France together with the pelagonium that has leaves that smell like mint and bouffain, looking gorgeous, always looking gorgeous that one. Now here in front we have a species pelagonium and this one, look at it, this is a plant full of character, pelagonium tomentosum. And it flowers, there's the flowers, but they're not that spectacular. I think I'm in my own shadow here, am I? But um, the thing about it anyway is the leaves, the scent off the leaves are... It's kind of minty or citrusy. I'm not quite sure if it's a pleasant smell or not. It's interesting. That's what I'll say about this plant. It's one of character, an interesting one. Okay, so just tripping over here, I'm trying to find something else that's of interest to talk about. There's my Scheffler at the back. Ooh, spoilers, spoilers. And um, this gorgeous Quantock Pelagonium, double diamond, still in flower, still looking good. And a hibiscus that my friend, friend gave me for my birthday. Thank you, Tina. Over on this side, the Tibuchina is just coming into flower now, very, very late, just in front of the nudie tomatoes. I've taken all the leaves off these now so that um, the white fly is minimised in the greenhouse, let's just say. And here's a begonia. This is a tuberous one, sunburst I think it's called. And this is the one that I covered in a video right, right back in spring. What happened was one of my chrysanthemum photos was chosen for a seed catalogue and they sent me a couple of begonias as recompense, let's say. So um, this is it. I think it'll probably be prettier next year. And uh, Brugmansia, unnamed Brugmansia beside it, finally kicking into flower. 
So down here behind the shade, you can see that the orchids have all gone indoors. This epidendrum just flowers and flowers. Look, I'm getting seed, seeds. I don't think there's anything I can do with those, so I'm just going to have to discard them. But um, on the table where I had my cattleyas before, I'm just putting the um, pelagoniums as I cut them back and spray them. Some succulents and what I have of my amorphophallus. It's been a very disappointing year for the amorphophallus. Some of them just didn't wake up at all. Here on the, under the table are some pots of amorphophallus that just didn't wake up. Now the plants are still alive because I've excavated and checked and they haven't rotted, the bulbs haven't rotted, but they just haven't grown this year. And amorphophallus can do that, they can just decide, right, it's not the year for them, taking the year off. I wish we all could do that. Um, if you check out uh, plants and things, he has, Bill there has a, a video about his amorphophallus and he's in Canada and he has also decided to do not very much this year. So it's a bit strange really. So that's all for the moment. That was my September greenhouse tour. I hope you found a couple of plants in there that are of interest to you. That's the thing with them, um, you know, these tours, that if you're not interested particularly in pelagoniums or cattleyas or South African bulbs, then hopefully I'll grow something somewhere along the way that will be of interest to you. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks very much. Bye.